So I focus on the very last source of reading the Middle Ages, which is a letter from Hernán Cortés to Charles V, um, the King of Spain in 1520, during the period of early exploration and colonization of the Americas by the Spanish. This letter is basically about Cortés's rapid, sort of abrupt conquest of Mexico or the New World, and the first half of the letter is concerned with Cortés's civil attempts to secure Aztec rulers as vassals of King Charles, and then the second half narrates his victories and conquests, which he views as crusade-like religious triumphs. To me, um, the letter shows Cortez's medieval belief system and how he attempted to graft that onto the Aztec world, molding it to fit his worldview. It's setting the stage for the age of discovery, which was influenced by medieval ideals, like religious evangelism and expansion of empire, but at the same time exhibited some ideological shifting towards modern ideals like globalization and colonialism. Basically, this source ties together all the themes we've been discussing in class and then gives us a preview of what's to come in history, which is why I'm really sad that you left it out. A lot of these themes um, really stem from religion, um, so I'll start by talking about that. Um, but a pretty clear example of medieval tradition would be the idea of using religion to justify conquest, like what happened um, in the Crusades. So in his letter, um, Cortez writes, As we were carrying the banner of the cross and were fighting for our faith in the service of your sacred majesty in this royal enterprise, God gave us such a victory that we killed many of them without ourselves receiving any hurt. So here Cortez is using religion to justify his conquest of the Aztecs. Then he uses religion in furthering conquest. Because of their white skin and general otherness, um, the Aztec people believed Cortez and the other Spaniards were gods, and he really perpetuated it. The Spaniards would bury immediately any men or horses that died so that no knowledge of it would reach the Indians. So in doing this, Cortez exploited the Aztecs' religious beliefs to help himself and his country. And then on the other side, we can see religious ideals changing a lot in this time period. Um, we like to do a lot of comparisons in this class, but the textbook doesn't really have a contrast to Cortez, so I found one. Um, it's a Dominican friar um, named Bartolome de las Casas, and he is one of the first cited people to racialize the Indians and advocate for their right not to be slaves, which is pretty significant, pretty cool. Um, he famously condemns the Spanish for their conquests in the Americas, and some historians will even refer to him as Cortez's archenemy. Um, de las Casas would actually refuse to absolve of sin anybody who'd held Indians in slavery. Um, so he's using religion to like further sort of a social justice cause, where on the other hand, Cortez slaughtered Indians and then said in his second letter, God blessed me in this. Um, and so Cortez uses religion to justify killing Indians, while de las Casas uses it to, adv to advocate for their freedom from exploitation or slavery. Um, this contrast in ideas is really telling of the changing views and uses of religion in the age of discovery. So moving on, another theme is the feudal allegiance to authority or to the crown. At one point, Cortez seizes Montezuma and demands as ransom that the Aztecs pay tribute to King Charles. He writes in his letter how one lord was received into the royal service as a vassal and describes his efforts to otherwise secure Aztecs and align them with the Spanish Empire to fight his conquest. Throughout the second letter, he refers directly to King Charles as your majesty and most powerful lord and constantly assures the king that he has the Aztecs under control and will use them to benefit the crown. This comes from a medieval view of monarchical authority as absolute, however, we do see these views beginning to change a bit in Cortez's letter as he stages his reconquista of Mexico without approving it with the king first. So in this letter, he's presenting his conquest to the king for like forgiveness or maybe more validation rather than permission. Next, the effort to convert the Indians to Christianity was very clearly a medieval value. It seems to be something de las Casas and Cortez agree on. They both do want the Indians to ultimately convert to Christianity. Um, Bartolome de las Casas writes in his work, um, Brevisima de la Relacion de la Destrucción de los Indies, um, Todas aquellas gentes tienen derecho de recibir la fe y la religión cristiana, um, which means that all these people um, have the right to receive the Christian faith and then Cortez expresses a desire to win souls on God's behalf. Lastly, the desire to expand and explore the Americas is a paradigm shift we see in the letter that originates from a medieval desire to spread Christianity and to create religious empires. The Patronato Real, or the patronage system, granted Spanish authorities in Iberia um, the right to appoint local clergy members or church officials as colonial authorities overseas in New Spain. Um, this idea connects the 16th century colonization of Mexico by Spain to earlier medieval church-state ties in Rome, Byzantium, and all Andalus. 
these great empires of earlier medieval times would use religion to unite huge masses of land and people and make them easier to rule. And I think this medieval impulse is really clear in Mexico. And essentially, what I think is happening in the source is we're seeing medieval values shift to comply with the modern desire to expand empire and colonize the new world. The values are still there, um, like religion, evangelism, empire, expansion, and power. They're just evolving with time, so we see how medieval ideas laid the groundwork for later ages. These connections help historians to see the bigger picture of historical change, and that's what I think is important about this source.